That takeout coffee cup may be messing with your hormones. That is right, America. Most people know that some plastic additives such as BPA, now we hear all over the place, BPA-free, BPA-free plastic, that that's a good thing. That's not going to hurt you as much. So most people know that BPA is harmful for your health. But what you don't know is that an upcoming study coming out in the journal Environmental Health may find that an entire class of plastics, including the type commonly referred to as styrofoam and a type used in many baby products, may wreak havoc on your hormones regardless of what additives are in them. The study's authors tested 14 different BPA-free plastic resins, the raw materials used to make plastic products, and found that four of them released chemicals that mimic the female hormone estrogen. Very, very disturbing. As Mother Jones reported earlier this year, many BPA-free plastic goods, including baby bottles, sippy cups, food storage containers, leach potentially harmful estrogen-like chemicals. But until now, it wasn't clear what role the resins played in this. So styrofoam, for example, I've got a styrofoam cup right here. Polystyrene is the resin that's used in styrofoam and similar products. They tested 11 samples and consistently found that estrogen seepage was happening. Now this occurs usually not at room temperature, but after exposure to intense steam or ultraviolet rays, this is something that can happen and does happen pretty frequently. So styrofoam is a registered trademark of Dow. Company stresses that the product is used for crafts rather than food and beverage, but we should know that while styrofoam, you know, the thing that's originally styrofoam. So what we call styrofoam is actually polystyrene. And that is what has the potential to leach these estrogenic chemicals. So this is a big deal, folks. I mean, I think this is a consequence of moving very quickly, you know, in terms of our technology. Some of the things that are on the market right now, the plastics, I mean, they haven't even been available for an entire lifetime. So there's still really no way to test to see what's really safe and what's not. So I think it's important that we continue to do this research. And when things look concerning, you know, we try to take a step back and be like, hey, maybe we should get these off the market and try something that we know isn't going to have any harmful side effects. Let me know what you think about that one in the comments below, folks. Don't forget to subscribe.